is, the KH is one of the, most, the elements most commonly dosed by our hobbyists, especially those new to the hobby, it's often the first one that they dose. This, this is generally quite a big mistake because they generally end up doing more harm than good. Hard corals use, particularly SPS, use a huge amount of KH and calcium in their skeletons, uh, mainly calcium, and that will uh, deplete the levels of the two. However, this, what tends to happen is most of the KH lost in the home aquarium is actually lost because of the levels being out of sync with each other and it just falling out of the water. You'll quite often see little white balls appear, which people often think are snails, eggs, things like that. That's actually the calcium and the carbonates dropping out of solution because they're out of balance. There's plenty of guides online as to what level your KH and calcium should be. And people run a KH as low as 6.5 all the way up into the 15s. But bear in mind the C is only about 6.5 to 7.5 KH and that's what most coral farms tend to run at or maybe a little higher at around 8 to 8.5. Running at a very high KH can make coral iron algae go very well, but also if you do get growth on your hard coral, it's often very fragile, the density is down, and although you might get more length of growth, the actual weight of deposition of calcium and stuff is actually a lot lower. So on a normal tank, if you haven't got a lot of hard corals, you don't really need to worry about KH at all. It is what it is and just let it run at what it is. Water changes will maintain that quite nicely. Bear in mind calcium, KH and magnesium will need to be in balance with each other. And if you're dosing your KH, chances are you can then mess up your calcium and your magnesium doing it. If you're not overly familiar with the chemistry involved, don't touch it with a barge pole because chances are what you're going to do in trying to correct one parameter is mess up the other two, which is only going to make the KH lower. And it can be the case where the more KH buffer you add, the lower your KH goes. So it's one of those things you just don't want to mess with, just leave it as it is. You only dose it if you absolutely have to, and if you have to, you only dose it to replace how much you've used. So what you do is you test the aquarium every four days, plot on a graph, just to show how much it's dropping every four days over the average, and then dose to compensate to that. But as I said, unless you're familiar with the chemistry involved, and unless your tank contains quite a large amount of hard coral, Water changes alone will be enough to cope with any, any chaos uses within the home aquarium.